welcome to the Grand West Burst Show. This is episode one, and what an exciting episode it is. But firstly, thank you very much for joining us. It is going to be a lot of fun. And let me straight away introduce you to the people that you are looking at right now. So to my left, we have uh, Damien Stander. He is... Uh, uh, SESD uh, facilitator, and then of course uh, Rhoda uh, Stoffels, who is an ESD beneficiary. And uh, you might be asking, what is this all about? What are we talking business? And first things we must be saying, of course, big thank you very much to Sun Grand West for doing this, because this is absolutely brilliant. What the show is about, this is the platform, what you dream of when you want to take your business, your organization, your brand to the horizon. Guess what? This is the vehicle in which you do it. And that is what makes this show so fantastic it's interactive we're gonna have polls we look forward to your contributions as well it is gonna be a lot of fun so welcome 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 thank you for joining us whichever platform you're watching we're on zoom we're on youtube my name is Dougal. it is the grand west this show so straight away we want to get into a damien exciting times very exciting i think look again business is growing i think we've got a very nice um sort of state at the moment so, you know post the pandemic post all the all the drama about not having business going having business slowed down Everything's on the app, and what a better time to talk about some, some sales. I mean, we've got an end of year coming. I think there's something like eight or nine weeks left of, of a working year. Yeah. So we've got a lot of time to think about things, a lot of time to work on things, and why not talk selling right now? Yeah, and that, and that is what the topic is going to center around today. Sales, sales, sales. We've always heard it. Now, Damien on this one will be bringing you the information, the knowledge, the, the expertise, if you will. And that is what makes the Grand Wiz Bush Show so exciting. Then when it comes to personal experience, that is where Rhoda pops in because you are a, a beneficiary. A SED beneficiary. So you'll bring your experience, your story to the table. That's true, Dougal. So the history is for the fact that I've gone through this program and it really pushed my business to another level. And I'm here basically to tell all the guys out there, you know what, this is an interactive show. Ask those questions, those vital questions. And you know what, we've got the expert here and I also have my experiences. Go for it. I think I, if I can just add to that just yeah. quickly, I mean, again, talking the theory, talking the knowledge sets. Oh, yeah. Um, it's a whole different environment when you are using your own business as the example. I mean, exactly. Rhoda's business may be a bit mature, but less mature, so she might not be able to always input or, exactly. or implement all of the, the stuff we talk about. And that's why it's important to someone like Rhoda talk to us as well about how she found the content and the information in her particular business as well. Yeah. So what, what you're saying is when it comes to that, of course, there's no right or wrong, but there is a bit of a right and an easier yeah. way. There's a best practice <laughs> in how you can put the best practice in your business, yeah. yeah. So what can I do to make my business perform closer to the best practice versus doing it properly and fluidly from the first time in? Yeah. And always maturing, always trying to make it better as you move through and as your business grows. And that's what it's about. So, lots of gratitude, of course, this is the Grand West Burst Show. But more importantly, we mentioned to you, this is interactive. So, right now, we're going to have polls throughout the show as well. And uh, you will see this at the bottom of your screen as well, that QR code. So, what you got to do is just to scan to join the polls. And uh, we're going to be asking questions, of course. We will have uh, the answers straight away. We will discuss it. And this is very pertinent. Now, just to remind you, today we're talking sales. So, that is it. Ultimately, that is the one thing you got to do we all know no business will survive without it so uh, let's do a quick practice run as well uh, just to do uh, a, a poll quickly so you can see the QR code uh, at the bottom of the screen there right now so what I want you to do is just point your phone camera your mobile device you uh, uh, scan the, uh, the QR code it will take you straight to a question of course and let's make the first one just a fun one uh, which we will do uh, we'll do a very fun one <laughs> and uh, we're going to put up a fun question just to see that everybody is sort of uh, getting it right. And it is very important because we look forward to your contributions on this as well. As we move through dis different uh, discussion uh, topics and points, of course, uh, your experience, brilliant. Put that forward through to us. If you have any questions, whether it is specifically to the knowledge and the expertise that uh, Damien provides here or Rhoda's story, then uh, please uh, put those questions in. So I want you to scan that QR code. We're going to put it up for you again. If you haven't done so yet, you scan that QR code straight away. And uh, we're going to have a question that come up there. We'll make it a nice and fun one. And here it is. So uh, scan that QR code straight away. What is the mood of the audience? So that is you. What is the mood of you today? All right. So your first option there, excited, anxious, optimistic, inquisitive. So uh, just respond on to it and uh, we will straight away get the answers. And we're doing this just so you can see exactly how we will make use of the polls within the program and this episode today as well. So uh, that is just fantastic, absolutely brilliant. So what is your mood? Let me ask you quickly. 
My mood is excited. <laughs> All right. What is your mood? <laughs> optimistic. 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 <laughs> optimistic. All right. So there you yeah. have it. So easy. And uh, the process is very simple. It uh, doesn't matter on what uh, mobile device uh, telephone you would be using. So you simply just point your camera right now to that QR code. Uh, you will click on that. You will open it up in the browser and it will take you straight through to that one. So uh, you do that. Uh, people are struggling, away. I think, with the technology, but I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it just takes a few seconds. You open it up in your browser, it will take you through to it, and uh, we will see that responses as they come in. So as you know, today we're going to talk sales, which is the most important thing. Uh, and we're going to get into that as well. But I want you to make full use of this poll opportunity, all right, to get it in. As we get those responses in, and once we do the other polls, we will do it. So just to recap, you scan the QR code, simply just zoom your camera onto it, click onto it, it will take you straight to the link, you open it in the browser, and then those options in terms of whether you are optimistic, inquisitive, excited, whatever the options are, you click on it and then we'll have a percentage split in terms of the responses. So let's get straight into it because we are talking sales, the most important thing. How true is it? Without sales, no business goes forward. I think it's 100% true. I'm sure Rhoda will agree. Totally. It's, I think there's no organization, there's no entity around at the moment that can't operate without income coming through. Mm -hmm. Whether you are a starting company, you're looking for funding, you're looking for grants, you still have to motivate, you still have to sell your business. Whether you're an NGO, a church, whether you're government, whatever you do, you've got to get business or, or revenue in. And I think it's, there's a very nice thing I thought about this morning. You know, very often we get stuck in doing things, or we get stuck in delivery, we say we have huge problems delivering, but those are good problems to have. Mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. good problem is being busy. Mm -hmm. The bad problem is when you have nothing to be busy for, when you're not having business coming in, there's no sales coming through. So again, the first thing to do, if you want to keep your business alive, if you want to sell, you have to get through and get sales in. Let me ask you this, how easy is it to do sales? <laughs> <laughs> Not that easy, Dougal. You know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful word in business, but actually having to get those sales is sometimes very challenging, especially if you're a small business, and I think even larger business, and the times we find ourselves in as well, it does become a bit of a difficult story to actually get that sale. Yeah. And I think it's, a very, it's very much a confidence thing. I think yeah. you sell better when you're confident. I think you sell, sell better when you have confidence in what you're doing and how you're doing it. Mm. It's as soon as there's a bit of a lack or a bit of pressure exactly. that selling becomes very, very difficult. And I think we'll talk about, talk about it a bit later. There's a, you know, selling is an art. You know, is it selling an art or is it a science? <laughs> yeah. And definitely yeah. it's a bit of both. You've got to have a process for how you sell and you've also got to have the charm, the charisma, the, the personality to go out mm. and hunt it to actually get those sales. Yeah, and if you're watching this right now, you might think now you got it down to a T, but of course, as we mentioned to you earlier, when it comes to one of the most important thing in business, when it is sales, there is the best practice, of course, to try it and to test it and what works. And of course, this knowledge that we're imparting right now is certainly there and designed to, to take your business up to the next level so uh, you can uh, do it more proficiently as well. So Damien, let's get things started out. Let's start it all today. I think the first thing we talk about is let's talk about confidence in Africa right now. So let's mm. talk about the little bit of, of, of good news we have. You know, we've got mm. drama in, in South Africa where the government is potentially not working as well as we should. We've got a few things like crime and, and that kind of happening in our, in our country. What we don't often think about and ask is how confident is business? How is business looking forward and how is mm. business looking at the environment and reacting to it? And we've got a little, little slide up that just talks about the, the business confidence in South Africa right now. And we thought we'd do a little bit of a relation between how we're ranking towards the rest of the world. So the higher your, your, in, your indicator, where South Africa says 110, or the lower it is, the less confidence the business would have. So when we look at something like South Africa sitting at 110, we are sitting well above the established countries like France, Germany, Canada, wow. the USA. I mean, if you look at the UK sitting at minus 21, and if I remember correctly, that minus 21 was just when, they, when the new prime minister pushed out that new tax law and the pound sort of took a huge knock as well. Mm -hmm. So business conference took a huge dive because they didn't see the taxation working out as well as it should. Mm -hmm. But South Africa, to my surprise, personally, sitting at 110, I think it's about 150 out of 180 countries in the world, so it's really looking good for us. Our business leaders are feeling good about where the mm -hmm. economy is going and where our potential is going. So having a look at that, Malia, I mean, the, the facts are simple that it is a good time for business. It, it should be a good time for business. So the question will be is how do we take that forward? How do we interact with our economy, with our environment, with our, with our clientele, our markets, and make it even better? There is optimism. People are looking to do more, which means hopefully more money will be spent, more business moves forward, more business are growing as well, and therefore you spend more. Yeah. Mm. Rhoda, and do you find that, I mean, the back end of COVID, you've got oh, all yeah. sorts of other things happening, load shedding, these are the regular faces of any business. Do you feel that there's a confidence now? Is there the, 
I can definitely do I mean, just within the business world, where we're doing business right now, there's a buzz. There's, hap there's this, this buzz that things are happening. People are excited. There's excitement outside at the moment in the business world. And I'm feeling it. And everybody else I've been chatting to regarding um, their business as well. Everybody's like saying, oh, I'm getting so busy. So I think definitely where those stats are concerned, we are starting to experience that as business owners mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And you know what? I just want to add my two cents. The mere fact that we've got this biz show speaks to that. I think oh, so. Yeah. Th this speaks to it because it's immense the fact. 100%. That, uh, you know, it's all about scaling. Yes. I think so. Yeah. And again, I think the fact that many biz businesses have struggled during COVID. A lot of, a lot of companies have taken a bit of a knock. A lot of companies have retrenched. They've put staff mm -hmm. out to sort of, you know, they've, they've retrenched their jobs. Staff have, have left jobs or started their own things and have to start their own business as well now. Mm -hmm. cool. So we're seeing a big growth in the entrepreneur market mm -hmm. at the moment. We're seeing a lot of people starting new things, being very good at what they do, but not necessarily good at how businesses work. And I think what Grand West is doing here is just taking it, taking it out, giving people opportunities to actually grow their businesses away from yeah. the normal environment. Yeah. Definitely. So getting into it. So, sales. I think the first thing we need to talk about with regards to sales is that there's a big difference between marketing and selling, mm. right? I think it's one of those those those, those little elements that, that new business owners, that small <laughs> companies tend to miss out a bit, and I'm sure Rhoda will speak to it now. <laughs> you can't you can't mix up a marketing and selling environment. And I think before we talk selling, let's talk marketing just a little for a, a, a small few seconds, right? Marketing looks at a holistic company brand, right? It talks one to many. If you want to put it into a nice little like um, metaphor. Marketing is like farming, you know, you have to plant the seed, you've got to water the seed, you've got to let mm. the sun shine, you've got to let them grow a bit. Whereas selling is more like hunting, you've got to go out and harvest the weeds and harvest the crops and whatever else it is. If we don't see the difference, if I don't build a pipeline, if I don't give myself an opportunity to talk to people, I can't sell to them. Because mm. selling takes time, it takes confidence, it takes maturity, it takes a little bit of credibility, a bit of validation from your, from your clients. And what we tend to look at then is how do we move away from just marketing into a sales environment? And I think we need to distinguish between those two before we talk selling. I mean, Rody, you would have probably felt like you've done everything at once at some point in your business as well. I totally do. You know, that's exactly just looking at this now when we started the program as well. For me, it was overwhelming because I, me personally, was always under the impression that it was one. And having to do the program, I realized, but this is where I was going wrong, especially within my sales, that I needed to make the sale. In actual fact, I need to separate marketing and sales to be able to make that sale. And this was such a brilliant um, concept of actually, exactly like you're saying, putting it in the layman's term, basically the farming, and then I need to basically harvest it as well. And me personally, when I started this doggle and Damien, it was for me one, but now I've come to the point of realizing it has to be separate. It so wasn't easy, sorry, it, no, no. <laughs> it wasn't easy at the beginning. It's very because, difficult. Because, you know, running your own business, it's you having to basically juggle those balls and not realizing that these two were actually vital for your business and not having to combine them. And it is difficult having to run mm. your business and do these uh, marketing and sales and actually doing it at the end of the day. Uh, let me ask you both this. If uh, And I, I can clearly see the, the difficulty in the distinction mm. here. But I mean, uh, there are now other ESD beneficiaries. Yeah, as man. well uh, we, we, this doesn't matter the scale of your business the size of your organization it doesn't and I think that the mm. important part is even if it's one person doing both functions there has to be a, a differentiation between to get to down focusing on marketing building exactly. my brand building the credibility pushing out a message and um, communicating with my with my audience or communicate with my markets and mm. the second aspect be okay fine today I'm gonna go out I'm gonna close these deals exactly. I'm gonna go and talk one to one I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go and customize or change my sales offering a little bit to suit this customer for this mm. sale itself. And if we don't wear those two hats in the company, it becomes very difficult to close mm. the deal. Okay. As an example, a nice little stat is, in marketing there's a, there's, there's a, there's a belief or a, or a statistic that when I go and meet someone the first time, the chances are only 3% of people will buy at that particular point. So if I don't focus on marketing and building the relationship and building the credibility of what my business is, Chances of closing a deal are only actually 3%. Mm -hmm. Even if they want to buy my product, wow. it's only 3%. So I've got to have that, that sort of structure and that, di and that division between let's make and build a brand and let's build a relationship mm -hmm. versus now I'm going to go out, I'm going I'm I'm to you know, hunt that deal, I'm going to close that deal, I'm going to get that deal in because of it. That's mm -hmm. so true. And just an example of that in my business as well, um, Dougal, was the fact that I had to, when I had done the program, I realized that I needed to spend a certain amount of time in marketing. Basically, getting the word out there, getting our business out there, our name out there, and then once a client is interested, I then basically take some time out to make that sale. 
So, and many times you actually work quite hard on the marketing part, on having to get your information out there, that I mean, sometimes a year later, a client will contact me and tell me, you know what, you gave me this information, will you still be able to do this? So, you know, it doesn't happen necessarily immediately, and this is what you uh, need to understand between the two, basically. It's again, that farming versus hunting. Exactly. Farming yeah. takes time, it takes <laughs> pressure, it takes a drought potentially, it takes, it takes a bit time. of good rains, you know? Exactly. And then finally, when it's ready to be, to be eaten, you can then go out and, and, and harvest. <laughs> and although, uh, just uh, to define this now again, just so I understand it as well, these two different concepts, marketing and sales, they, they, they coexist. They coexist? They coexist. They, they, almost, they almost interact, it's almost like a husband and wife. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I've got a role to do this in my, in my household, a role to this household. If I don't work together on it, mm. the business can't flourish. Yeah. But again, today we're not talking marketing, but that comes a bit later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Today it's sales. all about sales. 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 <laughs> and I think, I think from this from this point, it's very, it's very so the next step to talk about is how do we go out and sell? So what is the what is the next philosophy in sales we have to consider? Now, many business owners will look at, you know, I've got to offer my customer everything I possibly got. So I've got to move forward and I've got to try and you know, give them or, or, or saturate that market of my customer, or saturate that customer with everything I can possibly do. <laughs> and it's a problem because most business owners tend to be the, the person who can sell, they can, they can deliver, they can market, they can close deals, or they can, you know, pick up the phone or whatever else it is. And what happens is when you start doing that, your business, as a business owner, you start getting trapped in your company. Mm. If you don't sell, you don't make sales. If you don't deliver, you can't deliver the sales you made. So what we suggest and what we push forward for a lot of our customers is sell less to more people. So take away the abundance of offerings, take away the, the, the huge amount of catalog you've got, and rather focus on the things that your company can be good at, that you mm. can master quickly, and rather go out and sell it to more people. Look at volume versus looking at, quant at, at, at quantity, sorry, quantity versus quantity, uh, quality. Mm. Rather go okay. out and get more people to buy from you and sell them less stuff. Wait, <laughs> let, let me recap this. So I'm selling goods, mm -hmm. and I've got a hundred things within my catalog. I sell a hundred things, mm -hmm. and yeah. there comes Damien, and I sell all hundred things to you. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is don't do that. I need to sell you five things and sell the other things to another thousand people. So I'm gonna create that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sell five things to a hundred people. To don't ah. sell a hundred things to a hundred people. To, yeah. Rather mm -hmm. sell five things, become the expert of those five things, get a so team who can support you to build and to construct or to move those five things to 100 people. Exactly. And again, the reason is, there's a very nice, you know, as business owners, we get, we get a little bit stuck in our, in our emotion as well. Mm -hmm. Only I can deliver. Only I'm, I'm the best person in my company to take this product forward, to sell this product, to, to deliver this product. No one else can do it the way I can. Mm -hmm. Which is true, but it shouldn't be true, right? If Rhoda can sell a sack of potatoes like I can, it's a sack of potatoes. Mm -hmm. If I pay Rhoda five rand to sell a sack of potatoes for 10 rand, I'm making five rand for doing nothing and Rhoda's selling it for me. So the more Rhoda's I can get, the more customers Rhoda sell to, the more easy money I'm making as a business owner. So by taking my catalogs, reducing uh -huh. it down, spreading the load a bit and letting somebody be an expert at a smaller range of products, I can make more money. That sounds difficult because it almost sounds a bit counterproductive because as a business okay. owner, you want to sell everything you have to one person. Uh, Dougal, I've learned that if you're going to be doing that, you're going to burn yourself out at the end of the day. And one of the biggest mistakes I think business owners make is they don't like sharing their wealth of knowledge to especially the people that's working with them in the company because they want to hold on to everything. And it becomes a little bit of an I'll speak of experience. It's because it's your business. You feel it's your baby. You don't want to share this baby. But in order for you to actually grow is exactly that. I needed to look at my business and I had a list of a long list of things that I was doing. I actually had to, we did a test within the EST program with um, Damien with Optic Growth and we then actually categorized and we percentage wise what was working. And then I actually found out that there was a lot of things that I was doing that was not bringing me in business and I was spending too much time with that. So really sitting with, look here, this is what I'm like weddings. We don't do wedding photography. We are photography slash live stream um, um, company. And I've come to realize that weddings is not our forte. We've got graduations, live streaming, more of those um, that I could actually focus on and make more and make my business grow and make better sales at the end of the day. And I think, I think we spoke about a little bit earlier about the, yeah. wedding, the wedding discussion. Weddings are sexy. Mm -hmm. you know, everyone likes, everyone likes <laughs> a good wedding true. shoot. Everyone likes, <laughs> everyone likes being the, the photographer who can be at the wedding and you can yeah. you know, do things. Doing corporate photography is not a sexy job. No. no. Right? It's, not, you know, it's, not, it's not very sexy. Yeah. But if you take the, 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 the practice of, of getting recurring revenue in, for example, one of, the, mm. one of the big selling philosophies, try and get consistent business throughout. Unless the person's getting married twice, there's only one sale you can make from one couple. 
Yeah, right? that, I was going to say that. <laughs> one self and one couple. If I, if I work with a corporate, a corporate may have a quarterly function. They may exactly. have other, other events. If I get a contract with them, I can almost guarantee more work from that one corporate. So true. And I don't want to say it's easier, but mm. doing corporate photography, you don't need to be as skillful with lighting and aperture and all those very nice you know, photographic theories <laughs> because you can just go and do it. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm sure Rod has been thinking now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, don't agree with you. you. <laughs> don't agree with you. Because <laughs> I want to... I wanna... That's why he does the business and I basically do the photography. Yeah, there's a lot of skills involved. <laughs> <laughs> but I get what you're saying. And, and right now, I mean, you're watching this now. You and, uh, may, Maybe this is news to you as well because, you know, you, you need to sell a less to more people. That is what we're saying. That is essentially it. And maybe you've come up with a way of how to do it. Then by all means, uh, uh, just let us know. Um, we look forward to your interaction as well. And just to remind you as well, in case you haven't done so yet, scan the QR code to join the polls because we're going to have polls throughout the broadcast as well as uh, we touch base and, uh, and unpack these different concepts. How difficult is it to sell less to more people con, con, uh, in, in opposing fact to selling as much as possible to one person? Me, in my industry, like you know what, everybody's industry is, industry is different and you need to look at what products you are selling. So um, obviously at the end of the day, what I have done, especially on my corporate side and COVID hitting us, I had to look at, okay, it's photography, but what extra can I add on to that? And this is where, obviously, we started using our cell phones to load photos immediately, just look at things differently, but yet limited to the fact that it's not, now I'm going to basically email it, now and take the photos, and WhatsApp, and da, 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 da. it becomes a little bit too much. And then you can't concentrate on taking that perfect photo. This is in my industry. So it, you need to be careful on wanting to sell to like you know there's a saying in the photography side like you know these guys are taking photos of everything from baby shoots to family shoots to weddings to corporate photography to da, 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 da. and they not they're still sitting in the same rut they haven't moved forward they still have pay and not paying their bills reason why because they're undercutting themselves and they're trying to do too much because in our side in the um, photography side you still need to edit those photos you still need to go to your client so if you take your wedding looking at the wedding itself it takes you at least two weeks to actually sit and edit those photos and give it to your client so if you're doing a little bit of everything then you're doing a corporate then you're doing a baby shoot then you do when do you actually get that time to actually process that photo and put it out there? Because you're taking on too much. Oh, I want to say, so again, the, the, the question about how do we move away from, from you know, selling everything and, and, and exactly. limiting it down. Two ways. You either plan for it, so you say, fine, in the next financial year or my next period, I'm going to start removing these, these, these items from my catalog. I'm going to start mm -hmm. taking away the, the wedding shoots. I'm going to start taking away the corporate shoots, I'm start, whatever it is, right? I take yeah. away aspects and I don't sell them anymore. I let the contracts run out, I let my work run out, but I actively start selling the, the, the items I want to sell less often to more people. Mm. Exactly. And again, the big, the big reason for that is, like you mentioned now, you can do wedding shoots, right? There's no reason why, 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 why Rhoda can't do wedding shoots. Mm. But then she must hire somebody to do that for her and take the focus on that person and let that person do their job. Mm. Exactly. And, I mean, again, it comes back to scaling. Mm. If I can't, if I'm going to be the person doing everything in my company, mm. there's only so many hours in a day, so many days in a week, <laughs> weeks in a month, there's only so much you can do. Yeah. If I don't delegate, if I don't make that task easy, if I don't just outsource things, mm. and this outsource, I mean, away from me and into my company, mm. chances are I'm not going to be able to get the business growing any, any further. Mm. Exactly. So let's find something that I can find a skill set for, I can, do, I can deliver that skill set, and I can move away and let my business run on its own two, two feet. Mm. All right, so uh, there we have it. I, I understand that part now. <laughs> <laughs> what do we talk about next when so, it comes to sales? I think the next thing, and again, it's, you know, the, the next big problem that, that we find, particularly in the in sort of small business environment, is what do I charge? You know, there's a, there's a very nice thing, we're talking about it again, I think in our third episode, we're talking about value over price. How do I value my products, or how does my customer value my products, versus what I charge for it? And I think when we're looking at that, particularly that's, that pricing strategy, mm -hmm. there's, a few, there's, there's, there's three strategies we can take within any sort of market. We can either have a penetrating strategy, a market pricing strategy, or we can have the skimming strategy. Now each one has its own sort of as a purpose or it's time and that kind of stuff there's a very nice theory if you go too cheap right you're seen as cheap if you go too cheap your competitors your bigger customers your bigger corporates competing against you can go cheaper than you are and be cheaper for longer while they blow you out or while they burn you out right mm, so exactly. penetration strategy generally looks at how do we charge for less but get into the market it's a quick you know two three month or a period a, a period cycle where we charge less to get into market and penetrate that market 
So it's not about being cheap, it's about trying to get clients, get the clients to see you, get your portfolio together, get your work going as well. Mm. Mm. So if we use Rhoda's example again, if Rhoda decided, or as, as, you know, as the company decided to move away from weddings, right, so moving to, to, to corporates, they may have decided to get their portfolio together and charge a flat, easy rate that's mm. going to really knock the market a little bit. As they start growing, demand starts growing, they start charging more because the, 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 the clients or the markets are getting more comfortable with what they can do. Yeah. Mm. I mean, again, everyone does this. Black Friday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Black Friday is a massive penetration strategy, right? You, you yeah. discount everything. You try and move stock. You try and get rid of stock because that's what's, it's what happens. If you don't do it, particularly in, uh, on Black Friday, you lose sales, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Game, macro, all of those big, big you know, um, retail stores mm -hmm. are fighting for stock sales. If they don't drop their prices, they're definitely not going into the market for that, that on a day. Mm -hmm. Then... The next one, we're looking at market pricing. So now this is when you start finding your place in the market. The market starts react, uh, reacting to who you are. They buy into you, you have credibility in your markets. So you can start offering a competitive market rate pr price. That's again, if you use the game and the sort of macro um, yeah. sort of uh, example, that's where macro can't charge 100,000 rand for a TV while game charges 5,000 for a TV. Mm. Right? Because it's not, the, yeah. the same product can't be that different. So that the consumer naturally will move across to the, to the cheaper version. Right? However, if macro charges 10,000 and game charges 10,000, the question now becomes, who do you go to? Who do I trust more as a brand? Mm -hmm. So now we start having competitive exactly. market advantages. We start talking about differentiation and we start moving to a place where we can focus on making the best product for the best value and try and drive that strategy of mm -hmm. how do I be better than my competitors? Yeah. And but that will be where other things like extra offerings, the service, you know, the sort of friendliness, all of that comes into I that because that's the persuading factor. You, you look at something like a Woolworths pick and pay, a checkers, a spa, why do you choose to go to those different places? They all sell food. Mm. They all sell milk and bread and whatever else maybe, but they charge you more or less depending on where you go. Mm. And there's a reason why someone goes to Woolworths versus going to ShopRite or, uh, or Checkers. You know, mm. ShopRite, you walk in, there's a lot of options, there's a lot of um, um, things available, but it's a big store. You can't find things quickly. You know, packaging looks a little bit more, a little more untidy compared to Woolworths. Mm. Right? Their fresh food might not be as fresh as Woolies fresh food is. Whereas you go to Woolworths, you have nice small packaging, you've got sexy looking stuff, the, the place looks a bit cleaner, the staff a bit friendlier. Mm. There's reasons why you pay more than to get into a store like that as well. Mm. Yeah. And the last one look is, is a skimming. This is where you're a premium package, a premium, a premium brand, a niche market, something unique to the system, where you're able to sell more because there's more demand for what you do, but there's less competitors in your market. So I'm able to supply a product that is seen as high end, and therefore charge a more premium service to that, even though I might be doing the same thing. Again, a Woolworths versus a, a shop out of checkers type of thing. Yeah. I'm having a look at this, and when, when you've got to devel uh, develop your pricing strategy, th this seems tricky. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not something you're just going to suck out of your thumb. Definitely not. As a business owner. Definitely not. And again, you know what, there's a lot of jar jargon and a lot of wording and it really need to, you as a business only need to look at this. And it was overwhelming when I had started the program as well, just looking at this and I'm like, oh my word, where do I find myself? And you know, just listening again to, you know, exactly what we're discussing there. It's, it's my, myself finding myself moving in that as well. And finding myself kind of in between the marketing pricing and the scheming right now, because having a product that you know you can only produce and there's very few of you who can actually do it. So, yeah, you, you need to look at this and really open your mind onto exactly what you're selling, where do you find yourself within that um, st pricing strategy, basically. And this is where you work out your price. And for me personally, I have walked away from clients because I know my value. I've learned in the program to know the value of my product. I was confident about that, that I could basically put my pricing down and say, this is my price, basically take it or leave it. So it's just having to find it. And actually, I think the courage this is a very big word, the courage to be able to do that. Because as a business owner, it's sometimes very difficult if you're finding yourself having to make those sales, getting the business, but also having to say, you know what, you're not going to be abused, you're not going to be burnt yeah. out at the end of the day. And, and let me ask you this, because you speak of courage, because, uh, I mean, I would imagine, how confident are you if you charge 10 Rand for something, and everybody else is asking 100 Rand, you start doubting yourself, but I mean, you're quite, quite confident asking 10 Rand, or vice versa. Can you asking 100 Rand, Rand for something, <laughs> and then that everybody else is... I mean, so look, so, so as, 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 a, as a fundamental of business, right, selling is mm. one of those fundamentals. There's a whole range of other things that come into it. Your financial controls are exactly. hugely important. Very so important. when we look at your income statements, right, you've got your sales, you've got your cost of sales, your pricing structure will affect by how much you pay for a service. Exactly. So as an example, if Rhoda charges 10 Rand, but her 
her employee charges 10 rand for an hour. She's making mm. no money as a company. Exactly. So she can only charge you as much as she can make as well, and then what the market will, will allow you to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I want to do a pricing strategy, it's, it literally is that, it's a strategy. Exactly. I would decide, am I going to take a knock on my profits and rather go for a big, huge market and huge chunk of business and then and build my, 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 um, my profit up by the value of profit, not by the margin of profit, profits, right? That's a strategy we're taking forward. And then maybe slowly start reducing the, the, the value mm -hmm. and rather improving the margin, different story or, or different, different strategy. But you have to play it by ear. You've got to understand that I can't go and undersell what I'm doing yeah, exactly. because I can't afford because I can't afford it, or I can't yeah. just break even because I'm not making money as a company. Mm -hmm. So and your financial management is a big part of choosing important. the strategy. But you have to understand what am I doing with regards to pricing it and selling it and where am I going with it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And probably just chatting from my side as well, being compliant, um, Dougal, because you know what? In business as well, a lot of companies and a lot of people I find don't want to be bad registered, they're not compliant. And I mean a lot of people actually saw the Sorry to say the word, the backside when we had been hit by COVID because they weren't compliant. So when I give my price, it's exactly that. I need to look at the fact that I need to pay UIF, pay UIE, workman's compensation. There's so much more involved in being um, basically compliant and having to, when I price you, I'm going to be looking at all of that because I actually have water, electricity, municipal bills for this property that I've got or my business that I've got. There's expenses involved. So when I charge you, it's not basically just me coming out there, but everything else that's actually packaged mm. exactly in that. As which, which, which lines into what you were explaining exactly. with, the, with the strategy. Exactly. And even if it happens, if you were to be aware of that, because I'm sure business owners are aware of that, like, you know, okay, I'm, I'm placed here or I'm placed there. <laughs> I mean, you, you're still confident because that's your product offering. Can I say something, Google? <laughs> so the frustration which I find as a business owner is the fact that I'm competing with somebody that's not necessarily always compliant. So if I'm going to basically charge you, I'm just saying hypothetically speaking, 3,000. It's inclusive of that. You come in at basically 3,000, you're not paying SARS that money. So when I take off my VAT from my 3,000, obviously I'm sitting with less because the 15% goes to mm. SARS, it's not mine. Yeah. So my price is going to be less than 3,000. So, and this is the frustration I'm finding out there is that when I do business, the frustration of the corporate companies looking at my pricing and comparing me to a person that's not compliant, and then they say, oh, especially with what's happening in our market with a third quote, I mean, it's one of the frustrating things, and I know there's a lot of you guys is nodding your head right now, <laughs> saying it's very frustrating. I vouch for that as well. And exactly the compliance and having to work out your price at the end of the day. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it is, uh, the pricing is Look, think, determined by everything I think, else. I think just to add to that, the big, the big thing of pricing is you've got to understand what your costs are. Exactly. You've got to understand what your market wants, and then you've got to go out and sell it. Yeah. Exactly. So whether it's, it's compliance or whatever yeah. else it is, the marketing <laughs> element of building credibility is a huge part of it away mm. from just selling it. Yeah. Mm. You've got to have a product you can sell, a conference to sell it, and you've got to make sure you know what the pricing is. And I think that's why this pricing strategy is important. Very important. I, right. think, I think the next thing we need to move on to is, is with regards to, to pricing, because it's, it's a, this thing can go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Fun totally. and, and costs and what else it is, right? <laughs> I think the next thing with regards to selling is we've got to make sure that we then have a look at what types of sales we're we making? How do we, I mean, we talk sales, talk revenue, money yeah. into mm -hmm. my bank accounts. And I think the next thing to look at is, you know, if I'm looking at the types of revenue I'm building or, or I'm transacting with, there's transactional revenue, right? So it's a once-off goods-based selling. Um, I think of something like a coffee shop, right? I walk in, I buy a coffee, I walk mm. out, right? That's transactional. I, I want something, I get something, or I pay for something, mm. right? The next one is looking at a service offering where we then look at, you know, you're talking about, so as a photographer, you have a bit of a, a, a two-pronged approach. Mm. You've got a product in the photo, and you've got your service of being the photographer as well, right? Mm. So you, or as Optic Growth being, being business coaches, we've got a service of, of knowledge share, implementation as a service. So there's, there's a service revenue with regards to also then paying for something and getting a service on top of that. Mm. And then the third one is a project revenue. We have a longer term project or a longer term period of making sales, and that money comes in, but it's only for a defined period of time. And then the one thing that I want to push for today and really discuss today is the recurring revenue model. Mm. This is something where you're guaranteed to get the income or it's predictable income over an agreed to period or agreed to timeline and you know that money's coming in constantly. And from our perspective as, as business coaches, recurring revenue is the one thing you really want to focus on getting. You want to focus on getting it in because what it does for you is it helps you plan, it helps you budget and it's predictable. Mm -hmm. I know that next month I'm going to get 4,000 Rand from customer one every single month for the next 12 months. That means there's no need to sell to me again. I can upsell but there's no need to sell or go out and resell or resell for every 4,000 I get now. And, and what would be like, what would be an example of that? Like a subscription of sorts? Subscription, exactly. So 
Um, I go to MTN and I get myself a contract. I pay them 1,000 Rand for a month for a contract. That, that contract with them is for two years, right? 24 months, I've got to pay 1,000 Rand. I use their services of their bundles with us, maybe, plus I get the phone as well. They are guaranteed to get that 1,000 Rand in every single month for the next two years. Mm. No, need, no need to resell, no need to do anything. Yes, I can buy more data and so on and so forth, but I'm now a fixed customer of theirs for two years. Are we saying to people out there, this is where they've got to be thinking if they're not thinking recurring 100%. already? You must, like the, the, biggest, the biggest mistake business owners make when it comes to like selling is they think I need to sell to, to, to Rota today to get 10 Rand. Right? I'd rather sell to Rota and get one Rand for 10 months, every, for the next 10 months, because I know that one Rand's coming in for the next 10 months. Mm. Right? I can plan for that resource, I can plan for that, um, that expense of going out and servicing Rota once a month, every month for one Rand at least. Mm. If I don't do that, the next month I'm going to sell to Rota again and the following month sell to Rota again. And that's when you start having a revenue structure and a, and a, and a, and a profit and loss statement that fluctuates mm. hugely. All right. Ideally, and that's something that, that we strive towards at OptiGrowth and for most of our businesses, mm. I'd like to cover all of my expenses by, by, by recurring revenue. Mm. So if I know that I'm getting 100,000 in this month for my revenue figures and my expenses are 100,000 Rand, I'm making zero profits. Any additional sales, I'm winning. Mm. I'm making profits, I'm making more, more I'm going to scream to the crop, I can pay my salaries, pay my electricity, pay my car payments, whatever it may be, right? But every month I get more sales, then I'm making more money and getting more profit to it as well. Yeah. So if, let, let me put it out there to, to everybody watching, if you've got a, a recipe or maybe you haven't even thought about the recurring revenue, then uh, yeah, tell us why you haven't thought about it. Is it something that you just didn't think about it or maybe you've been doing it and realizing that that you're doing? Maybe you've got like some sort of winning recipe or also some take on this. How important is this? Is this something that you set out from the beginning? It was difficult at the beginning, Google, because not everybody necessarily wants to sign up with you or try to basically get a contract because it comes down to basically writing up a contract guaranteeing for the next six months to a year you will be mm. giving me business. It does become a bit um, frustrating or sometimes difficult, but once you get it, it does make sense. And for me, I've basically signed up a few contracts as well, just looking at that and saying, you know what, instead of just servicing you this once, how about me giving you a price and then servicing you for the next year? So you then automatically, like you know, you can look at your expenses and then you can start saying, okay, at least that money's covered that. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely planning at the end of the day. Oh. And look, I might not be talking about how to sell per se, right? Exactly. But again, I think that strategy of building, building a model, the strategy of, of, of putting a plan in place, of plan. wanting to go out and sell, sell stuff, also makes you more confident in yourself. Exactly. We'll talk about a few tricks just now about you know, how to you know, build a habit mm -hmm. or you know, a few things you can do to sell, sell easier. But I think it all starts with the basis of knowing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I know as a, as a business, my, my ultimate goal, my strategy for the next financial year is to build a recurring revenue model mm -hmm. and use that model as a way of funding or financing my business or making sure I've got enough, enough money in the bank. Then we can start building an offer like that. We can start looking at things like, what does the contract look like? I'm going to put it in front of Rhoda yes. and say to her, please sign this for 12 months. I can guarantee service to you. Mm -hmm. How do I go about selling that? What's the little tricks, the little, the little yeah. steps I use to, to, to close that deal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that way you start building this relationship more. Yeah. So yeah, so whenever you've got your project revenue, you run over time, transactional revenue, the services you're doing, recurring revenue, recurring, it needs to come again and again and again and again and again. That is, that is what we're talking about. Yes. That is cardinal. Because ideally, and let me just say this, the non-expert, it means I've made the sale once, it's done, the sale keeps getting. Well, exactly. let's talk about you as a presenter, right? You obviously want, this, you want to present this show next, next month and the next month and next month, right? Yes. You should sign a contract and say, listen guys, I will guarantee you <laughs> that I will put this, put this yeah. exactly. Be right. I guarantee that I will be at the show and I will charge you maybe a little bit of a discount, right? But I want that fixed income. Mm. I want to know that I'm going to be exactly. here next month so I can plan for it, so I can work towards it. I want to know that money's in my bank account by the end of the month or whatever yeah. the payment term is. And as a business, I don't have to worry about it now. It's done. I can get my, my accountant or my, my bookkeeper to go out and, and, and he or she can then go and get the money and claim the money back. But I can focus on the next big deal or the next big delivery, the next big something. All right. 100%, 100%, got that. Thanks for putting that so, <laughs> <laughs> and explaining that fantastic Look, it's not, it's not easy. I mean, no, it's, this, is one of those, this is one of those things, and I think Rhoda will agree with me. Mm. The theory is amazing, yeah. right? But yeah. if your business is currently set up for just transactional business, transactional. I mean, how does a coffee shop, which just sells coffees, put in, put in a, recurring, a recurring revenue money in place when they can't guarantee and they can't predict what their foot traffic will be for the next day? Mm -hmm. so, you know, then you talk about things like loyalty plans. How do I mm. bring them back the next day? You know, exactly. If I know on average I get 20, 20 cups of coffee made a day or sell 20 cups of coffee, how do I get 21 coffees? You know, mm. do, I, 
Do I do a referral program? Do I do something to bring more feet to the door? Or do I do a coffee club? You mm. pay me, uh, let's say on average, everyone buys one cup of coffee a day. Do, you, do I charge a hundred bucks a week and you come and get your five coffees, one every day? So, so you pay me up front and you get a discount for, for upfront payments. Mm. You know, there are models and things you can do. Every business, I think, can put together a recurring model if they think about their, their products a little bit differently, mm. dig into the numbers a little bit and move it forward. Yeah. I'd love to know if, if the audience out there have any sort of um, questions about you know, how in their business they'll, they'll put a recurring revenue money in place. Because yeah. from our, our experience, everyone thinks they can't, but until we talk to them, until we share a few <laughs> ideas, yeah. we tend to find something they can do. Yeah. Exactly. And exactly as you said, depending on, uh, on, on your product or services, you might be thinking, I never thought of this. But uh, then they definitely put it out. Whatever it is you're doing, there is something. And, and this is what this platform is all about. It's just a sort of brainstorm of ideas and the ideas will be flowing it certainly will be and uh, don't forget we are going to be doing polls as well so in case you haven't uh, scanned the QR code uh, it will pop up again on the screen and uh, when once we do a poll Damien what do we talk about next so we've got a few minutes left so I thought to the next one just a few tips I mean just a few little, little tricks of, of selling you know we, we spoke about selling being an art and a science now okay personally I, I don't I don't believe I'm a great salesman right I can probably sell a few things yeah. I'm a better delivery uh, person uh, I like thinking about you know, the material more but there are a few things that I can do to help myself get it get it better and the first thing is you need to look at how do you can you build trust with somebody so when you want to build trust can I talk to them on the same level do I make them mm -hmm. feel comfortable talking to me right mm -hmm. by do to do that we've got to also ask or we'll be allow them to talk as well most salespeople, I'm, you know, I tend to be one of them. I talk way too fast. I talk way too much. I want to share more information as much as I can. I don't let the person talk to me at all. And if I let them talk to me, it gives me a gap to go and counter or to put a little sales pitch in somewhere. I mean, I'm sure Rhoda will, mm. will, will agree with me here. <laughs> totally. You know, if she goes to, 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 to a client today and she wants to talk about selling, selling videography or photography, she's not going to tell them what she does generally. Right? She may give a few details. But you'll ask them, how big is the venue you want to talk? How many people are you talking about? Exactly. What sort of pictures do you want? And she lets them talk, them talk her through what they want. Mm -hmm. And then she can devise how she wants to print, or it's not print, how she wants to mm -hmm. you know, pitch that sale to mm -hmm. the sale. Mm -hmm. Do we need exactly. four photographers? Do we need three photographers? Then she can start adding exactly. expertise to it. You know, I think for the venue of 500 people, one photographer might not get round mm -hmm. enough or far enough to get pictures of everyone. So I'd suggest let's do three photographers. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you're doing three, I'll give you a discount of 5% because exactly. you know, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. right? The next thing is to be transparent. So can I show you exactly what I do and how I do it? And can I share some of the little details, maybe secrets? No, no business owner wants to share the secrets, but share a few <laughs> of the secrets. You know, show them how good you are. Show them the knowledge set you have and how, and how you work at knowledge set. Mm. Because it builds confidence again. And I think I mean, the next thing is, and it's quite obvious, don't sell ice, to, ice in the Himalayas, right? <laughs> don't sell something somewhere where everyone already has it, right? I, I don't come to Nikkei and offer Nikkei production or videography because they can do it themselves. Yeah. Right? Um, be optimistic, right? The one, thing, the one thing that most people tend to do is talk very negatively about the environments. So when we're selling, we try and be optimistic about where we're going. If I sat here and told you guys that, you know, South Africa's in the deep dungeons of despair, we are losing everything, you know, Yes, load shedding's happening, but we're going to focus on load shedding and how terrible it is for our business. We'd leave here and we all go, what's the point? Mm. 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 I've got to be a bit optimistic. I've got to try and sell something that can push it forward and make them better. Mm. I think, Dougal, you can probably talk about this more than I can. You know? <laughs> yeah. Stand up when you talk. Stand up. Right? Stand up when you talk. Stand up when you, when you want to talk to someone on the phone. Mm. If I'm going to sit down, I'm going to feel flat, I'm going to feel low, I'm going to feel like I'm not energetic. So I talk to somebody, I talk on the phone, stand up and um, feel energetic, put a smile on your face. I think. Mm. Somewhere mm. I heard the other day, you know, when you talk to somebody on the phone, smile, yeah. even though you can't see them, smile yeah. because you come across. You can hear it. it. You, you can, can hear, hear a smile. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you can absolutely hear yeah. And then I think the last, the last three are, 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 are probably the most difficult ones. The other ones are little tricks, the other ones are actual mm. efforts. Follow up, follow up, follow up, right? Yeah. I hate following up, I'll be honest, right? I'm a same business same. coach, but I hate following because <laughs> I think if you don't talk to me, then you know, <laughs> just same, you, same. right? <laughs> but sometimes people just don't respond. And they don't respond because they're ignoring you. They don't. Re they respond because they're either too busy or mm. they forgot. They put it in their calendar, but they forgot to get back to you. You always have to follow up and always give them time to sign. There's a very nice th um, sort of discussion or theory with regards to marketing that until they say no, it's a yes. <laughs> until they say no, it means it means they're open to to, to a yes still. Yeah. So push them until they un until they give you a no. Yeah. And then always be closing. Always be going for that deal. Always wait for the deal. Always push for for that for the closing of the deal and measure how many times people say yes and how many times they say no to you. And, and these tips we're giving, and it doesn't matter whether you're now uh, a born salesperson or not. 
these are brilliant tips. On that, because I want to get your advice on this. Mm -hmm. On this, it, it is very simple, like and, and like you said, with a smile. It's like when you don't smile, you sound like this. When you do smile, it sounds like this. It sounds happier. Exactly. And, and, and it is just a natural thing. And I also get the whole standing up, because you're more vibey, you're more... Everybody stands up, they're on a cell phone anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's much easier. Yeah, you just sound more vibey. Let's, let's ask you, because are you a natural, natural salesperson? That's selling, which is, we, we count this as the difficult skill set. Yeah. Does it come easy to you? Not at all. Not at all. Mm. I, might, I might look like an ex extrovert, but I'm, I'm extreme introvert. Not extreme, but I am an introvert. So it is a bit more difficult for me to kind of close the sale sometimes. You know, I can, I had to basically step out of my comfort zone and actually go meet people and then go and do the sales pitch and then basically sell myself, sell my business at that point. I've now started kind of perfecting the art of it, but it took some time. So, but I'm still not really where I should be. I, yeah. I, yeah. But I, I'm much better than when I started a few years ago, definitely. <laughs> Guide me through the process. So you're pitching an idea to me. You're trying to convince me to, to purchase product or services or what. And halfway through it, I'm just like, yeah, I'm not into it or whatever. <laughs> what, what goes through your mind? Because this is, this is the experience. I think then the sweat starts basically dripping down your face and you get sweaty palms because at this point you kind of know that you've kind of lost the sale because once your clients start doing that, then you've lost it. So yeah. then you need to basically step back as far as I'm concerned and just kind of, you know what, we'll meet again or... Look, someone, someone once told me again, that point. Someone once told me, ask the question, <laughs> are you bored? <laughs> <laughs> this is not interesting. Because why must I sit here and try and talk yeah. to somebody if they're, if they're not interested? It's not yeah. interested. Exactly. Nice to meet you. You know, thank you for the opportunity. Go. We'd rather, you know, let's call this quits rather before, before we, we get too bored with each other and too long and buy another, another cup of coffee. Exactly. Appreciate the time. Cheers. Bye. Yeah. And I Done. think this is where that comes in, you know, where the follow-up part comes in, where you need to know, okay, you know what, I'll follow up with you in the next month, two months maybe, because obviously at this point, you know, you're not, not interested. interested. So let me ask you the most important <laughs> questions. How to sell. If you take those tips, it has made your life easier, made, biz made things in business easier for you? So much easier. And just looking at that and exactly that trust factor, just going through it and just listening to it again, that does apply because you won't be able to sell something if somebody don't trust you. And I, I have come across a lot of people where you chatting to somebody and you feel uncomfortable. Because of the fact, the first thing that comes in, I don't trust you. And once you don't trust somebody, it's difficult to start taking the next other steps, basically to follow through, to actually get, to do business with that person. So I definitely do. But just looking at that, it made a massive, massive difference in my business as well on how to sell. I think those are some great tips. I honestly <laughs> think so. <laughs> so Damon, where do we move to next? So next month, um, I don't, I can't remember the dates exactly off offhand, but next month we're talking about the, the language of business. Mm -hmm. And it, this, is a, this is one I think Rhoda will agree with. <laughs> it's all about financial management. Ooh. The big scary, the big ugly scary. little giant in the back of the room that no one wants to talk about, the elephant in the room that the everyone's elephants. trying to avoid is financial management. So How do we read financials? What's the difference between an income statement, the balance sheets? What's the importance of it? And how do we go about using it for the best, the best um, mm. effort mm. and the, the best use in our business? Yeah, so finali financial management, the language of a business. They've got their own language. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be looking forward to that one as well. Uh, yeah, you see that the sweat signs is getting all sweaty again. Yeah. But definitely, yeah, looking forward to it. All right, so I promised you a poll, and I think that is what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to have to get a, a, a poll in there. So this is it. So you've scanned the QR code in case you haven't done it. Do so. And then uh, and let's ask this one honestly, and this is where we're going to end it. So uh, how would you describe your sales process within your business. This is it. And there are the options. And let's quickly go through them. How would you describe your sales process within your business? And I want you to do this as well, oh, Damien. Well, uh, you, you do this as well. Firstly, I, I take care of all the sales and marketing efforts in my business. Second option, I have delegated this function to an employee or outsourced the service to a different provider. I have split the sales and marketing functions in my business. And then the fourth option you have there, I've split the sales and marketing functions in my business and we actively measure how these functions perform monthly. All right, so those are your options. So uh, how would you describe your sales process within your business? And, and, and let's just hammer this again. This, this is super important. Super important. So again, mm. we go back to the start of the discussion, splitting that marketing and sales function is important. The harvesting, mm. sorry, the, the farming versus mm. the harvesting part of it. Um, as a business coach, right, we are, we're, we're mm. small, a small company, we don't have huge teams, but we've definitely gone the route of splitting the two functions directly. We understand that we have to market mm. at one point and sell at one point. Okay. We measure it through the CRM system we use, 
we measure our sales, so our revenue or our, mm. our income statements. So we've we've definitely gone into splitting it into two clear functions and measuring it, even mm. as a small team. And okay. that means between myself and my partners, I sit down, I go, today I'm marketing, tomorrow I'm selling. Or today I'm marketing, let me go see the results of what happened with the mail I sent out, the networking event I went to, how many business cards did I get, mm. how many leads did I generate in that one effort. The last one I then look at, okay, I've gone to sales, proposal sent out, how many declines did I get, how many mm. um, people have not signed up with me after how many consultations I've had with them. And then I look at my revenue. Am I actually still making sales? Are my contracts still valid? Am I still moving forward in the business with regards to where I need to be? Mm. So it's, it's possible, even as a small team. At least, okay. All right. So uh, I don't know when you look at that. It's definitely also, I, I, when I started off, I can clearly tell you before I started with the program, um, it was really, I'm thinking also, it was definitely number one, but we have moved on to number four. We've actually got a CR system that basically also we put ourselves in marketing separately that that actually gives us exactly who do we need to follow up, who we've contacted. So yeah, we've moved off to four, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but th th it was hard work, it wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy. And, and, and looking yeah. at that, that, that sort of options there, is that number four was the, 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 the most, 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 most desirable. The most desirable. Most point. desirable. And again, like we said, your maturity of business right now, where you are, you could mm. be in any one of those options. Anyone. You can change those options as you as you plan going forward. Right mm. today now, if you're a single business owner, a the delivery guy, the coffee maker, the toilet cleaner, the salesperson, you can decide today to make those two options or those two functions very clear. Yeah. You can decide mm. today, I'm gonna market and this is what marketing is. I'm gonna sell yeah. and this is what selling is. Mm. Yeah. So there you have it, just spl splitting those uh, two functions. That is brilliant. And uh, the responses we had on that, everybody tick, tick that one as well, which is you know, pretty good. Really mm -hmm. pr 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 pretty good. Do we have another one? I think that's it for today. That's it for today. But the exciting thing is that we will be back. And uh, as you said, of course, uh, we, we will be talking uh, financial management. Closing thoughts. And Rhoda, let's start <laughs> off with you. <laughs> Closing thoughts. Yes. Um, I'm quite excited, especially about this whole show. And you know that Grand West has given um, the businesses out an opportunity to be able to get from the professional and then also from the ESD uh, beneficiary, getting our point of views because this is something we had experience and belonging to it as well, that I was approached by a lot of um, ESD guys that was interested in the program and didn't know how to go about it. This is exactly the platform that needed to be created to be able to ask those questions. And I'm, I'm, I'm appealing to all the you out there that's watching, don't be scared, ask those questions. You know what, it's going to make a massive difference in your lives. I can basically say, what is it, three years later? Mm -hmm. um, that my business is on a totally different level compared to where I started at the beginning, which was three years ago. Yeah, and to any business owner out there, as, as you are, how important the sales is, it's like the number <laughs> one thing. If you don't have sales, guys, the doors can close. <laughs> <laughs> I had to check. <laughs> Damien, uh, uh, any closing thoughts from, from your side? I'm going to do what Rhoda did. I'm going to take a step of talking about the show firstly. I think yeah. the, I think from an opportunity perspective, this is a great way just to get good information across. Yes, it might not always fit your business the, the, mm. way, the way you want it to, but it's a great way of getting information out and trying a few, a few new things. Mm. Mm. You know, it's one of those things of when we, when we see with um, clients of ours, they tend to struggle to take on the information, particularly because they think they can't get there and they want to see a result immediately. Mm. Most of these things we talk about tend to take a bit of time to develop, time to mature, and you need to make a firm grasp of today, I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to measure in a month, two months, years mm -hmm. time to see how it changes. Mm -hmm. And I think Rhoda will also, also, also or will agree with me on this one, that the benefit of something like this is you now know what to do versus oh, yeah. guessing what to do. Mm -hmm. This show is all about sharing information so you can know where to look and know where to go and take that forward and give yourself a clear understanding of what your business needs to do. Okay. Yeah. From a sales perspective, if you don't sell, you die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is the harsh, harsh fact of it. And again, like I, I said now, go out, sell, make mistakes, learn lessons, you know, try a few new things, see what works, and constantly reevaluate and, and rebuild what you're currently doing. Yeah. It's the only way to get better. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of people say selling is an art and uh, is a science, but I mean, of course, uh, with great advice and tips, it, 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 it's a bit about both. 100%. It's, it's both. a bit about both. Not, we, we're not all artists, but we can use the data <laughs> and certainly do it. Thank you to both of you. Uh, uh, Rhoda, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Damien, uh, thank you so much as well uh, for being a part of this. And, and this is really what it is about. So we know we know several things. Of course, the business confidence level in Mazanzi has definitely stepped up. And this is a wonderful opportunity, of course, for you to take full advantage.
advantage of this. What we do know is as a business owner and as a business, your organization, you need to sell. Sales, 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 sales is the most important thing. And of course, is what gets you to the level that you want to be at. And that is what it's all about. And, and this show is definitely the platform. So as both of them have mentioned, and a big thank you, of course, to Grand West for providing this, which is definitely to the argument that uh, it is all about improving you as an organization and a, a, a business. So thank you very much uh, for watching. We will be back soon in the very near future. We will be talking financial management next time. And as we know, that is the language of the business. So it might sound scary, but it's not going to be at all because together we will tackle <laughs> all of that. So once again, thank you very much for being part of this. Thank you very much uh, to you two as well for being here today. Thank you for watching. And once again, thank you very much uh, to Grand West for making the Grand West Biz Show a possibility. So until next time, look after yourselves and everybody around you. Take care. Bye.